Well, it's February 1st, a Thursday, and you all know what that means. That means, as you know, we have a brand new TNA show we're definitely going to be reviewing. We're going to see Nick Menneth in action to take on Trey Miguel. The K are also in action as well. We got plenty other matches we're definitely going to be reviewing. And then, of course, we move on with Ring of Honor with very interesting matches. Now, as you know, the entire women's locker room are preparing for them. So those who will be noticing the ROH women's television title, this could be more the momentum they need to build up. We also have two core, uh, four corner survival ma uh, matches in both the men's and the women's. And we do have a proving ground match as well. And of course, first things first, we're going to be reviewing Stardust's much recent show from January 28th uh, in their show at the Toko Zozara show that took place on the 28th of uh, January. This is a prelude before we head to February 4th, which we're all excited to see. And then we move on, of course, to cap up the entirety of this episode with some news updates that tell what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling, such as the updates with the promotions on their upcoming events, like who's booked, what matches are set. We even have developments in the world of pro wrestling that we're going to be following up. We have some very interesting things that came around from certain wrestlers, certain surprises that has been announced, and of course, a GM has been announced for the Yoshi um, project known as Evolution. So we'll be talking about that as well. So <coughs> let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone, all things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, TNA, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, J Rod here. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is the channel where we do a lot of pro wrestling reviews from various promotions, not only here in the United States, but also in Japan, Mexico, Canada. Europe, the UK, anywhere in the world where pro wrestling is not as big, but it continues to grow. We also do discussion videos, talk about topics such as the wrestlers themselves, the promotions, factions, storylines, whatever we want to talk about. We also do more news updates. If I'm unable to put it on this episode, I can put it on a separate video by itself or some other form of way. We also do the Unagi Sayaka Watch, more news updates on alert, and various other cool things as well. So if you like what you see, please subscribe to us. So click on that subscribe button. You'll be getting a lot of daily reviews and very other cool stuff as well. But if you also like this episode, please give us a like on a like button or a nice comment in the description down below. Now, let's begin with stardom in Toko Rozawa. So I think this took place on the 28th of January. So this is more of a prelude before we head to February 4th, this coming weekend. So it opened up with Waka Tsukiyama facing off against Saki Kashima. Now, I have to say I love this opening of the match. Not because Waka is involved, it's about how it went down. There was a moment Waka tried to tr sweep drag a Saki Kashima to the other side and she was like dun, 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 going slow and walks like what are you doing and she played her I have to say but one thing I did notice normally when we see a, 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 a Kashima she's normally um always afraid but this time she wasn't I don't know because she thinks that maybe walk is the weakest link or she just likes having fun with her but in this case, she was very methodical about what she was doing. She was targeting Waka's arm, which is something that I know God's eye would do. So I'm sure that she must have picked up something. But however, uh, it did pay it off when she applied the Ute Kamitani, which is like a Fujiara armbar type, and forcing Waka to tap out. So she got 
a very strong W. Now, our next match, we have a bit of a three-way. We have Sayaka Kurara versus Mai Sakurai versus Ami Sodi. Now, of course, many times over with this type of match, you probably would think that Kurara would probably take the fall on this one because you got two strong wrestlers, mostly Sakurai and Ami Sodi. So, however, how this is going to play out? Well, of course, Ami Sodi and Kurara don't like Mai Sakurai with her little ladyship that they find annoying. So they will try to work together, but however, it was a big strong lariat by Ami Sori to Kurara to pick up the win. And of course, um, Masakurai, well, she did not do her little promo that she normally do after a match, but thank God. Moving on, we have an interesting tag match. We have Oedo Time with um, Ruaka and Starlight Kid taking on the Cosmic Angels, Yuna Mizumori and Saori Inoue. Now remember... Starlight Kid issued the challenge against Sarunoi for the, for the Wonder of Stardom Championship, a.k.a. the White Belt. Now, let me give you a little backstory about this, what's going on for those who are new. A, a Starlight Kid, in the other hand, has proceeded for this belt before. However, she is dis in disgust with Sarunoi, who obtained the belt. Sarunoi is not officially a full-time uh, member of the roster. She's considered as an outsider. So Starlight Kid, who is in... Um, inbred in stardom feels disgusted that an outsider has a belt that doesn't belong to her. But she did indicate that she want, once she beats Sarunoi on February 4th, that she's going to win that belt, then destroy it and build a brand new one with her image for her future. Which is something similar we have seen with, of course, David Finley. But we'll see if that happens. Many people already predict that there is no way Starlight Kid can be Sarunoi, but we'll see where that happens. But the match, of course, pretty well. As you know, they targeted uh, Yuna Mizumori just to send a message to Sarunoi. But it did not do any well because, of course, it was Sarunoi who delivered the message to Starlight Kid to, from Ruk, uh, to Rauka. And she applied the Thames te um, Tendra to pick up the win. However, Sarunoi told her that I know that you are attempting to destroy this belt, but I'm going to protect its tradition and history. What, of course, Starlight Kid does not like because she feels that the title has been defiled by Sarunoi, who's an outsider. But we'll see what happens on February 4th. We still got maybe a few more days until that happens. Moving on, we have star members, Yuzuki and Hazuki. They ought to name themselves as Yuha. You know why? They have the name Zuki in, in, in their name. Yuzuki, Hazuki. You know what? They should call themselves that. Yuha or something. Or, or Hayu or something. I don't know. It, it, it feels right. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below and you tell me what you think. So they face against the members of Queen's Quest. Lady C and Utami Ayashida. Now, you probably could say the X factors in this match. In the stars corner, you have Yuzuki who is a rookie. But however, she has been <coughs> very impressive since... She first debuted, and you probably would think she would pick up a win against someone, let's say, Lady C. However, that wasn't the case because it was Azuki who picked up the win with uh, the Hazuki Straw, which is the Maha Straw move, onto Lady C to pick up the win. So, very impressive win and a very impressive duo. But I would like to see more of Yuzuki and Azuki teaming up. And like I said, they should call themselves uh, Yuha or Hayu or something. I don't know. It just feels right. Just stop, leave me a comment, guys. Next up, we have the other members of, of um, Oedo Tai. Rina, Momo Wananabe, and Natsuko Toro. They take on stars uh, Saeida, Hanan, and Mayu Iwatani. So, of course, this was a pretty good match. But no storyline that involves them whatsoever. Because we do know that Mayu Iwatani has been issued a challenge by Mina for the IWGP title. But does not relate to this match at all. However, it was Saya Ida who picked up the win with uh, Tesha De uh, Dina on Rina picking up the win. Now, I know some of you may think those who've seen the show, you would think that Saya Ida would challenge for the, the future belt. Well, she already had that, but she had to relinquish. Right now, she needs to focus on the New Blood Tag Team titles with Hanan. So, that probably will be a priority for her, but we'll see what, the, what it lies for her at this point. Next up... We have God's Eye, consistent of uh, the rookie Ranan uh, Yagama, Yagama, um, 
Yagami, uh, Mirai, and Sudi, they take on Crazy Star, Mei Sire, and Zuzu Suzuki, and of course, Julia, which is a very interesting team up, if you might add on this one. However, I think this is a very uh, interesting dynamic. But however, I'm also was curious about uh, Yagami. As you know, she just recently joined um, God's Eye, as I predicted that she would. Um, she did pretty good. But however, it was, of course, uh, Mei Sera with the dropkick onto Yagami to pick up the win. And it was over right from there. God's Eye picked you know, uh, uh, Crazy Star and Julia picked up a good win. So that's pretty much it. Now, our main event, and this is also a prelude to we get all the way to February 4th. We have Queen's Quest, Mayu, Amasaki, Azumi, and Sayaka Mitani taking on um, EXV, um, Hanako, Mina Shirakawa, and Micah. Now, remember, Sayaka Mitani issued a challenge to Micah for the red belt. Now, Kamitani has now targeting this belt ever since she lost the white belt. She has perceived this belt before, but this was during when Tam was still the Red Belt Champion before she had to relinquish, relinquish it uh, back in October. However, Kamitani, the, as you know, has humiliated Micah on various occasions when it came with the White Belt. But Micah, who's now strong, is, is confident enough saying that there's no way Saeeda could win this match. But it was a pretty good match. However, um... I've been hearing a lot of people on social media. There are those that think that this new faction, um, EXV, are not going to work out. But we'll see how this progresses. However, it was Kamitani with a submission onto Hanago the Forcer to quit. <coughs> and, of course, Queen's Quest win this one. However, in the post-match promo, Kamitani swore to Micah that she will uh, dethrone her and take that belt. But Micah is sworn that she will never... Lose this belt to Saya Kamitani. But we just will see what happens on February 4th when we get there. And I think that's pretty much it right now with uh, Stardom. I think it's time for TNA. Okay, TNA. It opened up with the most wanted man... Nick Meneth taking on Trey Miguel. Now remember, a week ago, Nick Meneth defeated Zachary Wentz in a in a match, which of course I'm sure Trey Miguel and and Zach will never forget. However, last time Steve Macklin tried to to wipe him out, but it didn't, it backfired. But this time, this is a little bit different. However, Trey Miguel really pushed Nick Meneth to the limit in any way possible. But of course, Zachary Wentz was going to get involved in any way possible. But unfortunately, like any other type of match, he was caught red-handed by the referee. Or should we say, he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. So the referee decided to tell him, take a hike. Which of course, he had no other choice. However, you might have thought Trey Miguel would have won this match. But not only that, he even tried to gloat by using the swing chain music onto Nick Mennon. But unfortunately, it backfired because it was Nick Mendez with a super kick that knocked his lights out to pick up the win. Now, as soon as this match was over with Nick Mendez winning the match, he was viciously attacked by Steve Macklin, who now set his mark. Now, Steve Macklin, if you guys remember a couple weeks ago, he did stated that he feels that Nick Mendez has invaded his territory. That he has no right to be there and that he claims that no people may remember Dolph Ziggler. But no one will ever remember the name Nick Mennon. And they beat him down completely. Nick Mennon has no friends whatsoever in, of course, in TNA. But later on, we did see that, of course, Steve Macklin and the Rascals were so happy what they did to clean up the trash. However, Nick, uh, they bump into Steve Bailey. They feel like they could have just kept their mouth shut. But, of course, Zachary Wentz reminded him the last time. But we'll see what happens until then. Now, as you know, recently, the design has not been in a good state. Diener has been trying to put himself together, knowing that the design has to be continuing forward. But however, Khan has declared that the design is dead. And of course, Diener did not like that. But Khan was like telling him that it's dead because nothing went exactly according to plan. 
as they should have thought from the very beginning. And of course, it did. So basically, Diener feels like maybe he's right. Maybe the design really is dead. So who knows exactly what he was thinking. But we'll see what happens until then. Now, our next match, we have the K, Rosemary and um, Havoc taking on a pair of wrestlers local, I think, uh, Mila Moore and Savannah Th uh, Thorne. But, of course, watching this, we do see in the back MK Ultra um, watching on. Now, remember, they do have a rematch clause they could cash in at any given time as they want. However, the match focused more on Decay, who were victorious in their match when Havoc did a choke bomb, I'm going to say, on Savannah, and that picked up the win from there. But, however, MK Ultra they wanted to hear their reaction about this how this match went <coughs> for them. But however, they were interrupted by Danny Luna and Jody Threat. So, but however, Jody Threat will face against Masha Slamovich in later on. Now, we do have the first ever sound check show created by Alan Angels. His first guest is Josh Alexander, but I knew how this was going to go down. Alan Angels was going to piss him off one way or the other, which, of course, he did. So you can say this exactly went downhill, but, of course, I don't know what Alan Angels was saying. But if I'm him, I would watch out, keep steer clear away from Josh Alexander at any cost. Now, our next match, we have Brian Myers versus Kevin Knight. So this is a very interesting match. However, as you know, I, w I was surprised how Kevin Knight really took a really good fight on this one. Uh, but however, it was Brian Myers with the roster cut, which is like a lariat, that took him out and <coughs> pick up the win. But Eddie Edwards and Alicia Edwards <coughs> came around to celebrate. But however, they surround themselves to Kevin Knight to warn them that the system always works. However, the system did not go exactly like they hoped for because Kushida showed up to back him up. But, of course, the system, who claimed that the system worked, walked away with their tails between their legs. Now, during an interview, G.S. Miller actually talked to Chris Sabin. It's still unclear who was his partner, I mean, his opponent for an X Division match. Then we had a surprise appearance from Mustafa Ali. It seems that he is going to challenge Chris Saban for the X Division title. And then, of course, as soon as this was done, here comes those idiots, the good hand, you know. But Chris Saban decided to challenge uh, John Schuyler just to shut him up because they think that Chris Saban is a worthless champion, as Mustafa Ali would think. So we'll see where that goes from there on on. Now, moving on. As you know, we did see two weeks ago when TNA made its return. Frankie Kazarian turned his back on Eric Young. Now, the real question why. So he gave two different reasons why. The reasons why he came back, he felt that things have to change because he see how people were getting opportunities. And he feels that that thing has to stop. And of course, he felt that things have has to come to changes. So he doesn't care what people would think, but he thinks that he's doing it for the benefit of everything, for himself and for the company. So that's that's what he thinks. So we'll see what happens to them. But if I was him, I'll be more careful with Eric Young if he decides to go after him. That is something that could be clear. Now, before our next match, Diener comes up and he finally offic officially declares that, of course... The design is officially dead. And he says that dead things don't come back from the dead. Well, uh, there is one who is well known to come back from the dead. And you all know who that is. PCO. So we had that match. I can tell you that PCO squashed Diener like a bug. So he applied the PCO salt and it was over right from there. However, when the match was over, Khan showed up and attacked PCO. Uh, Diener thought that he was going to help him. Well, uh, Khan became more of an animal that's been let loose 
out of his cage and he snapped, of course, um, Diener's neck. Well, we know it's all fake on that part. But however, he tried to suffocate PCO in hopes that he kills him. But we all know PCO will never die. So that's always been the case right there. Now, as you know, we saw AJ Francis appeared in Hard to Kill. He has some sort of issues towards Joe Hendricks. But however, he seems like he has his eyes set on AJ, on Rich Swan. Like, he wants him to be something else. Now, Rich, he's not the kind of guy who would just be something that he's not. So that's pretty much it. However, Rhino even backed them up no matter what because these guys have always had each other's backs in the past. Now, as you know, this past weekend, the wrestling world received a buzz that Jordan Grace appeared in WWE's Royal Rumble. Yes. So Jordan Grace revealed that Scott DeBoer told her about this. And, of course, she had to um, go all the way there because... She felt nervous to go to WWE because, as I say, when it comes to Japanese wrestling, if you're someone from a different promotion, you are invading their turf. People would say the same thing with TNA talent <coughs> going to a company like WWE, even if you're just visiting or just being invited, that sort of thing. But, of course, um, Jordan Grace's mom uh, revealed that this was something that, of course, Jordan has always dreamed about. When she was nine years old being at the Rumble. So it's kind of nice. So I'm glad that she had fun. Now our next match we have is a um, Masha Slamovich versus Jody Threat. Now you know that Masha Slamovich possibly is not in a good mood. Because they would definitely want to get their tag team titles back. Her and Killer Kelly. However she had a contempt with Jody Threat. Uh, however, it was the snowplow that put away Jody Threat, giving Masha Slamovich the win. Now, as you know, the system um, were gloating earlier, uh, like a little later after defeating um, Kevin Knight. Alex Shelley has declared that he is going to cash it in, but Moose says that the, sy the system works their way. But However, Alex Shelley doesn't believe that. However, the system attacked Kushida out of nowhere. I'm sure that Alex Shelley will get his revenge because the system are telling them that they are the ones that call the shots, not them. But we'll see what happens because the one who calls the shot is Scott, I mean, uh, what's his name? Santino Morella. Now, our main event is the two out of th uh, threes series in it for the TNA Tag Team titles. We have the Grizzled Young Veterans versus the ABC. Now, this match came about because, as you know, the Grizzle Young Veterans felt that the match they had, their four-way at Hard to Kill, was a load of horse crap because it should have been a two-on-two -two scenario. Now, the reason that happened last time was because, of course, um, the Rascals demanded a rematch clause and I uh, forgot who else. Oh, yeah, and all this other stinks. So they felt that they should have been the ones being the only ones winning for that map, for those titles. So that this is going to lead the whole thing. However, uh, the Grizzle and Young veterans were very calculated, very teamwork oriented in, in many ways. However, they were able to isolate uh, Bay or A's Austin from each other in, in certain possibilities. But however, it was Drake who used his scarf onto A's Austin and then applied the Grizzle Young teeth, picking up the win. So they get one win. If they get one more, they become the brand new TNA World Tag Team Champions. So we'll, we'll see what happens next week or so. I think that's pretty much it with TNA. So let's move on with Ring of Honor. Okay. Ring of Honor started out with Dalton Castle. As you know, he has been driven to get his hands on Johnny TV for costing him an opportunity for the Ring of Honor World Television title. However, Johnny TV claims that Dalton Castle is not TV material and he will not face him because he's still not made for TV. So basically, he's been ducking him. However, Jerry Lynn decided to do something about it. So basically, Johnny TV chose Aaron Solo to face Dalton Castle. And as for Dalton Castle, chosen someone 
to face Johnny TV, but we still yet don't know who that person is. He even mentioned later on that <coughs> he's just a friend, but we still don't know who that person is. Now, moving on, <coughs> it opened up our first match, Spanish Announced Project, or ASAP, Serpentico and Angelico taking on Cameron and Alan Russell, two twins. Um, as you know, you probably would think <coughs> that SAP are not in a good mood after what happened last time with those idiots, the baby boys, Colt Carter and Gar Griff Garrison. But in the end, it was, of course, um, Angelico with a submission with one of the twins to pick up the win. But in the post-match, we saw those two idiots, Carter and Griff. But Carter has Griff's um, Serpentico's mask, so you know that this feud between them is far, far from over. Now, our next match, we have Nyla Rose taking on Emmy Camacho. Now, here's an interesting part that um, Col uh, Coleman Cap uh, Caprice Coleman revealed that Emmy Camacho is a student of Athena. So, basically, this is a direct message. But I can tell you that this match ended by a pinfall by Nyla Rose to send a direct message saying to everyone that she is the one running the things. Athena's gone and she will not be coming back. Now, our next match, we have the Iron Savages, Boulder and Bronson, along with Jack Jamison, to take on KM, uh, Braxton Hunter, and, of course, John Cruz. Now, of course, they got to be more careful with the comes with the Iron Savages because you don't want to go to the city. And you guys know what I'm talking about. I don't know if I want to say it here. I don't want to be demonetized by YouTube on this. But unfortunately, that did not do any well because, of course, it was Bronson, no, Boulder, with Hunter with the sauce that put him away and giving the Iron Savages the win. Now, during a interview with Lexineer, she interviews Ethan Page. Now, Ethan Page, as you know, he has one goal in mind, and that goal is the ROH World Television title. So that hasn't steered away what he's planning. But he does reveal that his family don't think he's going to win it because he still comes home empty-handed. But he made a promise to his daughter that he will come home with a title. But however, in the moment, he has to focus on Slim J. So we will see that in a bit. Now, our next match is Aaron Solo versus Dalton Castle. You probably would say that, as always, Dalton Castle being um, not himself anymore. But he was able to pick up the win on Aaron Solo with the Batarang. Now, the obvious question is, is Johnny TV watching? Well, we'll see about that. Now, Lixineer was in the back about to do something, but Nyla Rose. Well, let's just say that she is not in a happy mood for two reasons. One, as you know, things are. Um, she is trying to set up the chaos, but there are two. She is trying to get Billy Starks. Now, I'm sure she is trying to get Billy Starks to side with her, but however, Lexinia reminded her she has to focus on the ROH World Tele uh, Women's Television title, which is something that she is now desiring. So we'll see where that leads us from there. But Nyla Rose made it clear that it's all about the chaos. So, yeah. Our next match, we have a, a, a the ROH World Tag Team titles and a Proving Ground match. We have Fred Rosser and Tom Lawler taking on the Undisputed Kingdom, Mike Bennett and Matt Taven. Now, this is a very interesting matchup because, as you know, Lawler and Rosser, they were uh, enemies back in New Japan Strong. It was Rosser who defeated Lawler for the New Japan Openweight Strong t uh, Championship. However, this is the first time teaming. Many things, mis uh, miscommunications, mistakes happens, but it was, of course, Bennett who pinned Rosser to pick up the win. So we'll see what happens more with those two down the line. Our next match, we have Slim J versus Ethan Page. I have to say Slim J did try to put Ethan Page to his limits. But however, that wasn't enough because Ethan Page applied the ego's edge, giving him a win. I'm sure that the more wins he stack up, the more he will be in the title conversation to finally get a shot of the ROH World Television Championship. Our next match, we have Billy Starks versus Killer Kate. Um, as you know, Billy is building up momentum. As you know, she's going to be entering 
the chance to win the ROH wor World Women's Television title. I have to say it was a pretty good one because she pulled a really impressive pinfall onto a, her opponent, Killa Kelly, and that kind of ended right there. Now, speaking of the women, ROH World Women's Television title, Rachel Ellering gave the update towards everybody that Layla Hirsch is doing okay, that she is working great. And they have a really interesting thought, both Layla and Rachel, thinking, what if the opening round is those two facing off each other? I mean, it could happen, but we'll just see how that plays out. Now, our next match, we have the Infantry, Carly Bravo and Sean Bean taking on the Righteous, Dutch and Vincent, those two psychotic freaks. So you probably would think that the infantry will pull off something in the steam that they had this match almost won. Uh, they could apply the boot camp, but it did not. It was the autumn sh sunshine onto Carly Bravo by Vincent to pick up the win. Now, um, during an interview with Lexineer, she interviews Red Velvet. As you know, Red Velvet is also one of the competitors that's making noise to compete for a chance of the ROH Women's World Television title. So she is going to be in the Four Corner Survival and hoping that this will put, uh, make the world pay attention. So we will see where that happens. Now our next match, we have um, Queen Aminata um, taking on, uh, what's her name? Reza Clark. I have to say Queen Aminata was very impressive in this match. I mean, I've seen her for quite some time. Not to mention I followed her YouTube channel when she went to Japan to do a tour with Marvelous. But it was very impressive. She picked up a pretty good win with a diving with a double foot stomp onto um Reza to pick up the win. But however, there are those are uh, both commentators also commented something interesting. What if she's also involved in the conversation for the ROH Women's World Television title. I'd say if she is making good wins in in the ROH Women's Division, <coughs> she definitely should be involved in that. So we'll see about that. Now our next match, we have Gringo Loco versus Bad Dude Tito. I would have assumed as a fan, Gringo Loco, who is very popular in, in wherever he's at, either GCW, Wrestling Revolver, anywhere, would have picked up the win. However, it was Bad Dude Tito who picked up the win when he applied. I don't know what move it was. It kind of looked like an F5, but ended in that way. Now, our next match, we have a four-corner survival match. Trish Adora versus Kira Hogan versus Diamante versus Red Velvet. Now, all these ladies are in the conversation for the ROH Women's World te uh, Television title. So the obvious is what's gonna play who's gonna walk out with the momentum in this match. But it's a surprise, surprise, it was of course Red Velvet when he, she applied a spinning uh kick onto uh Trisha Dora, which it's called the mix, and it picked up a good win. So basically she will be one of those we definitely gotta pay attention how she'll do it hopefully to win the ROH women's world television title. Now our men's four corner uh, four corner survival match. We have Jack Cartwheel versus Alex Zane versus Blake Christian versus Lee Johnson. I have to say this was a pretty impressive match. A lot of high flying, very interesting moments. But however, it was Jack, it was Lee Johnson with an impressive win when he pinned uh, Jack Cartwheel, and just like that, I'm sure we're gonna see him more and more in RH. What he's gonna do, I can't wait to see what else he's gonna bring into the table into the promotion. And I think that's pretty much it with all the reviews. I believe it's time for news updates. Okay, welcome to our news updates. So this is what we have for all of you. Let's begin with updates with the promotion. First things first, we have the GCW updates. As you know, we have many events coming up from them all the way to March, I believe. Our first one, as you know, for this weekend, for the coldest winter two in LA, I believe, 
Um, they announced that Rina Yamashita and Masha Slamovich will team up again to take on Bessie, Ali Catch, and Effie. So I'm looking forward for that match. And then the following day, they will be in uh, GCW. Will have Feel No Ways. Uh, one, two matches have been announced. We have Chris Bay. He'll team up with Man Like Delirious to take on Fuego Del Sol, and of course, uh, Sam Stackhouse. I haven't seen Sam Stackhouse for a long time, but it's great to hear that we get to see him again. And then, of course, we have Masha Slimage taking on Starboy Charlie. So that's going to be fun. Now, on March 1st, uh, for the project event, Mike Bailey will be in action to take on the sauce, Alex Zane. That's going to be one fun match. And then, of course, the following day on March 2nd, for Keep in Touch, um, GCW will celebrate 25 years of the spider Nate Webb, who will be there present. Now, later on, on the 10th, we have the So Much Fun event. Uh, Casey Cattell, who's been announced to be making her GCW debut, will be facing against the Duke of Hardcore, John Wayne Murdoch. And then finally, as you know, they will ha head to Detroit for the role model show on the 22nd. No, the twin, whatever. Yes, and Nick Gage has been announced that he will be there as well. So I think that's all for the updates with GCW. Let's move on for other updates with the promotions. Got to Move has announced for their upcoming annual tag team tournament that will take place on the 12th of this month for the Go Go Green Curry Cobb Coon Cup. Uh, four teams have been announced. Antonio Honda will team up with Shuji Ishikawa. Tokiko Kirahara will team up with Shujiro um, Katsumura from, of course, Gambari. Now, it's kind of interesting that Tokiko and Honda are not teaming up this time, which was rather weird, but yes. Our third team, we have um, Emi Sakura and Masahiro Takanashi teaming up once again. Uh, they call themselves the uh, Hayek, Hayaki uh, Thunders. And then there is, of course, Sayaka Obihiro and Minoru Fujita. They will also be teamed up. So these are the teams that will participate in the tournament. I'm sure there will be more to be announced. Now, Yoshi uh, Promotion, or Project, however you want to call it, uh, announced for their upcoming show on the 18th of February. This is number 11 from Evolution Girls. Uh, they announced four matches for this one. Now, as you know, they normally would throw in a, um, a men's match. Here and there, uh, there's a tag match involved. We have Shu Shuji Ichikawa and Black Mansori teaming up. Uh, they take on against Kohei Sato and Sushi. It's been a while since I've seen this guy Sushi, but he's great. Um, then we have Soi. She takes on Kaho Kobayashi. Zones takes on Tomoka Inaba. And then Chi Chi takes on Dash Sh uh, Shizako. So that's going to be a very interesting matchup. Now, um, in March, this was announced recently. I was surprised. Tokyo Show Pro Wrestling will be doing a collaboration with Gambari Yoshi, or as we call them, Gangjo. This is going to be very interesting. Now, this comes in the heels when Gambari Pro has announced that they will be uh, stepping away from Cyberfight. And, of course, they'll be leaving by the end of March. That's the uh, general deal. The show is called The Shuffle Date, and it will take pl place at the Oino Park uh, um, Outdoor Outdoor. So basically, it's the same venue where Gambari will have their last final show with Cyber Fight. And then finally, as you know, more names have been announced for the upcoming collaboration between Marvel and uh, West Coast Pro. The, on the 23rd of March, Unagi Sayaka has been announced that she'll be participating. I'm so happy. I will mention her name once again when we do another Unagi Sayaka watch very soon. Now, moving on with some interesting developments. This was a very interesting thing. As you know, Tanahashi has took over the reins as president of New Japan. He stated that he would like to build a permanent arena for New Japan, and he wants to call it the Ainoki Arena. I have to say, not bad. I, I think this is a, is a good way to honor Antonio Inoki, who is the founder of New Japan. But I feel like they're doing the same thing what um, CML did. As you know, they own a arena themselves, the Arena Coliseum down in Mexico City. I think this is going to be interesting to have, that New Japan will have their own place. Um, Matt Riddle was on the Insight with Chris Van Vliet, and he talked about CM Punk's return. 
Uh, this is what he had to say. If CM Punk returned to WWE, there is definitely a chance that I might return too. I have no grudge again with the company. I'm grateful for the opportunities I've been given. I'm very happy there. So, um, do you guys think he should return? Do you want to see him back? If you guys say no, then I understand the real situation because of his troubles. That sort of thing. Now, our last update development here, as you know, I did talk about Evolution with their upcoming show. This was a very interesting thing that has been developed. As you know, I mentioned Shuji Ishikawa talked about how he was um, not happy with the idea that the president of All Japan Pro Wrestling, Fukuda, decided to use at-risk girls to be part of the All Japan shows rather than use um, Evolution. Well, um, as you know, he has helped... Um, the ladies to <laughs> be trained along with Suwama. It's now been announced that um, Shuji Ishikawa is now the new general manager of Evolutions. And of course, the girls are happy because, you know, they look at Ishikawa like a dad who's been training them, you know, and I'm sure he's like a proud father to see his girls uh, pick up the win. Uh, but however, uh, as the new GM, he's now declaring war against stardom. So this is a very interesting development. Now, some of you may question, why would he declare war against stardom? It doesn't make any sense. Well, remember, um, Evolution was part of a project that was created within All Japan Pro Wrestling. All Japan Pro Wrestling and New Japan were rivals from the very beginning. So I think about it like some of that tr and stardom is now owned by the same parent company as New Japan. So that kind of puts it up. But Ishikawa did say that he hopes to recruit 10 more ladies to join the promotion. Um, I'm sure they'll be working that. And he said that he hopes that this recruitment can happen before the end of the year. So that is something we could expect. Now, more developments with the promotion Evolution Girls. Uh, as you know, Sunny, who was one of the three girls that was presented in the promotion, as you know, retired. However, she decided to stay with the promotion as a staffer. And now she has a new job within the company. And now she is trained to become a referee. Uh, it's great that she's involved. I mean, um, I was very saddened that she had to make this choice to retire due to an injury. It's no one's fault things like this happen. But it's great that she decided it sucks that I cannot wrestle, but I will not leave them behind. And I think that's a good thing out of her. I think she is a very kind, big-hearted individual. And I think this is what, um, of course, Chi-Chi and Zones need. They don't want to lose their friend, and I think that's pretty amazing out of their part. And I think that's pretty much it right now with everything we have done with our reviews and our news updates. So let's just call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed this episode. Coming up, we do have AW Rampage, and I'm going to presume NXT Level Up. Now, I haven't decided yet if I will be doing some things before that. Now, I haven't seen the much recent Pro Wrestling Noah shows or the All Japan Wrestling show that recently took place. But we will see what happens since uh, I was, I'm behind on those. I'm going to try my best to keep up. Um, so I think that's pretty much it what we have for now. But at this moment, I will say this to all of you. So I must, I will say, I will see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.